All right, so we've been spending chapter four looking at applications of the derivative, and 4.9 is one of the most important applications of the derivative, and that's called antiderivatives. Um, these are going to be super important in lots of different applications later on, and most importantly, if you're moving on to calculus two, um, calculus two is mainly about something called an integral, which is basically an antiderivative. Okay. So why would we need these? Well, let's go back to a, a classic example of derivatives, of our application of derivatives, and that is to physics and motion problems. That if we start with a position function and we take a derivative, we get to a velocity function. And if we take one more derivative, we get to an acceleration function. Now, if you think about, um, let's just say a motion problem that's pretty classic in physics, uh, throwing a ball into the air, when you throw a ball into the air, um, you don't know the position function. It's not like you throw the ball up in the air and all of a sudden next to it, a position function ar arises. Instead, when you throw a ball in the air, what do you know what, what's happening is you know the acceleration that's happening due to gravity. And from that, we can work backwards by taking antiderivatives and get back to the velocity function and then take one more antiderivative and get back to the position function and then calculate where that ball is going to land. Um, so um, before you learn antiderivatives in physics, you would have to just memorize these massive formulas about um, position functions. Um, but once we have antiderivatives, we can actually just start with an acceleration function, which is just gravity, and work our way backward through this problem. So it's a very powerful application. Um, <coughs> so what is an antiderivative? Well, let's go to the definition. Okay, um, so the definition right here, oops, should be right here. Um, a function capital F, so big F, is called an antiderivative of F if the derivative of big F is equal to little f. And notice that I do have a big F, okay, so this is a big F, and I also have a little f here, okay, so try to keep track of those. So the derivative of big F is equal to little f. Okay. So sounds confusing. Um, so let's look at the example. So big F of X is equal to one third X cubed is an antiderivative of little f of X equal to X squared. Now the nice thing about derivative antiderivatives is you already know how to take derivatives. So for an antiderivative, you can always check your work that is this actually an antiderivative? Well, how could I check that? I can take the derivative of it. So big F prime is equal to the derivative of one third X cubed, okay? And the derivative of that with the power rule is X squared. So one third X cubed is an antiderivative of X squared because its derivative gets you to X squared, okay? Now, a pretty key word in this definition, okay, that we might have, you might have skipped over when you first glance at this is an, okay? It's not the antiderivative, it's an antiderivative, okay? So again, uh, big F of X is equal to one third X cubed is an antiderivative of X squared because when I take the derivative of it, okay, when I take the derivative of it, I get to X squared. Oops, I don't know what's going on there. All right. Now, can you think of anything else that you take the derivative of to get x squared? Okay, you can pause the video if you want a little bit of time to think. Um, all right, well, it's not gonna be another function. It's uh, like it's not gonna be like sine of x, you take the derivative of sine of x and you get x squared, okay? It's going to be very similar to 1 third x, squared, x cubed. I could add, a, say, two onto the end of this. And if I take the derivative of this, the derivative of two just goes to zero and you get the same exact derivative. Now, two is not unique there. One third x cubed plus five would also work. If you take the derivative of this, you get x squared, okay? Um, similarly, if you take the derivative of one third x cubed minus seven, take the derivative of that, again, the seven's gonna go away and you're just gonna get x squared, okay? So one third x cubed is what we call a particular antiderivative. It's just one of many. Um, but the most general antiderivative is given by this theorem. It says, if big F of X is an antiderivative of little f of X, then the most general antiderivative of little f of X is big F of X plus C, where C is a constant. 
So when you find an antiderivative, you can always add C onto the end of it, and that's still an antiderivative, and we call that the most general antiderivative. Now, this plus C, whoops, I don't know why it doesn't switch to highlighter. All right, this plus C right here, okay, um, it seems like it's a small, small deal, but it is huge, okay? Um, it, if you leave it off on a lot of problems, you'll get marked off every time you leave it off. So that's just lots of points, just point-wise when you're taking exams and quizzes and homeworks and things like that. Um, but moreover, that plus C is important because it comes up in applications. Uh, you need that plus C to actually do real problems. Um, so we try to remember it as much as possible. You can ask your calculus people or your friends who've been through calculus too how important that plus C is, and they'll they'll, they'll say like, oh yeah, I forgot that plus C a couple times and it lost me some points. And um, you don't want it to be the cause of you um, say losing points here and there because it can really add up. All right. <laughs> so how do we find antiderivatives of functions? Well, the most simple thing to do because we've already um, worked on derivatives so much, is you can just ask yourself, what do I take the derivative of to get this function? Okay, So we're not taking the derivative of these things. We're saying, is this the derivative of something else that I already know? And this is why I've been trying to stress all semester that it's really important to know your derivatives, not just kind of know them, um, like to be able to figure them out, on, uh, sit there after a couple minutes, figure them out, but to like know them by heart, to memorize all these derivatives, because I was saying eventually we're gonna go through backwards, okay? So if I'm trying to find this antiderivative in part A, the antiderivative secant squared of x, okay? I'm not taking the derivative of this. I'm trying to think of what do I take the derivative of to get secant squared, okay? Now secant squared looks pretty familiar. Um, I feel like it's a derivative of something, okay? And then again, if you know your derivatives really well, then you would know that the derivative tangent okay, is secant squared. So f of x is equal to tangent of x is the antiderivative. How do I know that? Well, it's because the derivative of tangent gets me right back to secant squared. Okay? All right, if I circle this as my answer, I'd technically be wrong. The general antiderivative means that plus c. Okay, and again, that plus c can really add up if you forgot it, say like on every problem, okay? All right, um, part B, what is the antiderivative of cosine, okay? All right, so what do I take the derivative of to get cosine? Well, sine and cosine kind of go back and forth. So sine of x plus c, okay? And one thing about antiderivatives that's really nice at first is that you can always check your work. How do I check my work? Well, I just take the derivative. What is the derivative of sine of x? Cosine of x. Okay. All right. See if you can figure out the antiderivative of sine of x. You can pause the video and unpause it when you think you found it. Okay. All right. So your initial guess might be cosine of x. Okay. And then plus c. And again, if you check your work here and you take the derivative of cosine, oops, I check it and I take the derivative. Well, what's the derivative of cosine? It's not sine, it's negative sine. Okay. All right, well, how do I rectify this extra negative? I didn't want the antiderivative of negative sine, I wanted the antiderivative of sine. Well, it's pretty easy. I can just put a ne another negative in front of cosine, okay? Now, when I take the derivative, I'll get negative, all right, negative, negative sine, which becomes sine of x, okay? Now, I gotta tell you, um, no matter how much antiderivatives you do, you'll always be better at derivatives than you will be at antiderivatives. So it's a good idea to check your work, okay? Like you know your derivatives much better than you know your antiderivatives. So even after you like try to memorize these tables of antiderivatives, it's always a good idea to check by taking a derivative. Okay. All right, I have a couple more on this page. Let's take a look through these. All right, so f of x is equal to x cubed. What do I take the derivative of to get x cubed? Well, we think about what we take the derivative of, what happens when we take a derivative, the power goes down. 
okay, by one, right? So an antiderivative is gonna do the exact opposite. And instead of the power going down by one, power is gonna go up by one, okay? Now, if I checked right here and I took this derivative, I would get four x cubed, okay? Now, I don't want that four out in front, so I can counterbalance it by just putting a one fourth in front. And now, when I take the derivatives, that four and one fourth is gonna cancel and you'll get right back to x cubed. So one fourth x to the fourth plus c. Okay, all right, pause the video and see if you can find the antiderivative x to the fourth. See if you guys can figure it out. All right, so similar reasoning. Okay, I should add one to the power. Okay, um, well, when I take the derivative of this, I would get five x to the fourth. I don't want that five in front, so I'll put a one fifth there, plus c. Okay, curious how many of you guys missed that plus c or how many of you guys got it, um, but it's better to miss them now and go, oh man, I keep forgetting this plus c and not miss it on tests. All right, when I take the derivative of this, again, always check your work at this beginning stage, one fifth times five x to the fourth, and it goes right back to x to the fourth like I wanted to. Okay, all right. In general, the antiderivative x to the n is you add one to the power and then you divide by this new higher power, okay, plus c. Okay. Now this will work for every value of n except n is equal to negative one. If n is equal to negative one, you would divide by zero right here and you're not allowed to divide by zero. So what is the antiderivative when x is equal to negative one? So this is x to the minus one, okay? Well, see if you can remember, what do you take the derivative of to get one over x? All right, well, hopefully you remember that when you take the derivative of the natural log of x, you get one over x, and again, plus, All right, so that's part one. Uh, we went over a couple of examples. In the next part, we're gonna do a table of integrals and a bunch of integration rules, um, just like sum rules and constant multiplier rules, but more examples as well. So make sure you watch that because you really want that table of integrals into your notes and we need a little bit more practice at this.